what's up guys, Pocketable Tech here today with a review of the Motorola Moto G. So for those that know, this is a $179 off contract phone. But is it even worth $179? That is the question, that is why you are here, and that's what we're going to discover. By covering everything from the hardware, to the software, to the optics, and just the overall user experience. You're watching Pocketable Tech. So we'll start in the hardware department first, and we'll work our way from the exterior of the device deep down into the interior of the device. Now for those that already own a Moto X, or may have watched my unboxing and initial impressions video, we'll see that the Moto G aesthetically looks very familiar to the Moto X. Actually, side by side, both the Moto X and Moto G are physically identical. It isn't until you're up close that the small differences between both phones become more apparent. To see these differences, let's start by looking around on the back of the devices, starting with the backfiring speaker grill. On the Moto X, the holes of the loudspeaker grill are much smaller, giving a better uniformed, more machine drilled look, whereas the speaker grill holes on the Moto G are much larger and spaced. Another difference between the Moto X and Moto G that you wouldn't be able to tell just by looking at them is that the Moto G is slightly heavier, weighing in at 145 grams compared to the slightly lighter 130 grams of the Moto X. Now before any negative judgment is made in regards to the extra 15 grams of weight, let me assure you that the extra weight of the Moto G actually works to its advantage and makes the Moto G feel more substantial in the hands. As far as the specifications go, the Moto G is running a 1.2 GHz quad-core Snapdragon 400 processor with Adreno 305 GPU. So the graphics are going to look great, but not flawless like they would on the Adreno 330 GPU. Still, with this being said, intense gaming is very possible with very little to no dropped frames. Upon powering on the Moto G, you will be greeted by a sharp looking 4.5 inch HD IPS display providing 329 pixels per inch. And just trust me when I tell you that the display looks very nice and vibrant. The quality of the pixel resolution and the pixel density alone is enough to justify the price of the Moto G. Following in the tradition of the Moto X, the Moto G can be easily customized by popping off the backplate for an array of different colors and backplate options. These back shells can be purchased during the checkout on the Motorola website. This particular model is the 16GB model, and then there is an 8GB model, but I strongly suggest the 16GB model for $20 more, especially since there is no expandable storage, and 8GB is very little space, especially when you take into fact of the OS, and then you're left with very little. So if you plan on downloading apps, you definitely want to go with the 16GB model. And since we're removing the back plate right now, let's talk about the battery. Underneath the Moto G's removable shell lies a 2070 milliamp hour battery. However, don't get too giddy because the battery is embedded, thus non-removable. I at first was upset by Motorola's decision to embed the battery, especially since the back shell is removable. But I soon learned about the water resistant nano coating, and now I understand why the battery is non-removable. Basically, the nano coating helps the Moto G from becoming damaged by moist conditions. Erica Griffin actually did a video where she immersed the Moto G into a sink full of water to test out how protective this nano coating is. I'll leave a link to that video in the description for you guys to check out. Furthermore, being able to remove the battery shouldn't be a big deal since the 2070 mAh battery performs excellent. You can expect to get approximately 12 and a half hours with heavy use and about two and a half days with light to moderate use. To say the least, I was very surprised by the battery performance on the Moto G, and after using it for 4 weeks, I can confidently say that the Moto G, in regards to battery performance, is up there with other great battery consuming devices like the LG G2, Moto X, and Lumia 1520. In regards to charge time, it will take approximately 3 hours to charge the battery from 5% to 100%. But again, once fully charged, depending on your usage, you will have enough power to last for days. In regards to overheating, I can tell you that during my time with the Moto G, I noticed some slight heating up of the device while gaming when the battery was around 9%, but still, it never overheated to the point of shutdown, nor did it ever get unusually hot. Moving along to the software side of things, the Moto G comes equipped with Android 4.2 Jelly Bean, but is upgradable to 4.4 KitKat. 
As you can see, the UI is very much stock Android with no overwhelming skins of any sort. The notification center also follows the stock Android experience as well. Also, being an unlocked device and not tied to any carrier contract, you can expect to find no overwhelmingly useless bloatware that's going to clog up your phone. Instead, all you will find are Google Apps, which we all use, and some useful Motorola features. Motorola Assist is one of these features and was also included on the Moto X. What Motorola Assist does is allows you to set times and dates in which you would like your phone to not interrupt you. So for instance, when you're going to sleep, you can set a time where your phone goes into sleep mode and all your incoming notifications such as calls and emails will be silenced, which is a very useful feature. And to take it one step further, you can also select certain contacts that you can allow to reach you regardless of the time of day. You can also use Motorola Assist for similar scenarios when you don't want to be interrupted, such as important meetings. And in this case, Motorola Assist intuitively looks at your calendar to judge when you are in a meeting and will silence your phone. Moving along to the optics department, the Moto G is equipped with a 5 megapixel autofocus lens with single LED flash and we also get a useful 1.5 megapixel front facing camera which comes in handy for our video calls like Skype, Google Hangouts, Uvu and the bevy of other video calling apps on the market. For someone who loves taking pictures and posting them to social media sites, then the Moto G will do just fine. However, if you're looking to replace your point and shoot camera, I wouldn't recommend the Moto G. Low light photography isn't good at all, and even in sufficiently lit settings, the autofocus tends to take a little longer than normal to focus. The Motorola camera application I do like a lot. Simply swipe from the left to the right, and your control settings will display. Just like on the Moto X, you have the ability to snap still photos while you're videoing, and that's a really cool feature. And by the way, the Moto G can capture 720p footage at 30 frames per second, and you also can record in slow motion. For those interested in seeing sample footage of the Moto G, check the description for the links to those videos. So after all is said and done, is the Motorola Moto G the device for you? Well maybe, but before you make any decision, consider the following. The Moto G is a very sturdy and customizable device. It doesn't feel at all cheap like its price might suggest. The curvature of the Moto G makes it feel very easy to hold and pocketable and the Motorola dimple like on the Moto X is very oddly attractive. One of the biggest things the Moto G has going for it is its unbelievable low off contract price. So right away we all know Motorola had to cut some corners and they did so in the optics and speaker quality department and focused more on providing a great display and smooth user experience contained in a comfortable form factor. To briefly touch on speaker quality as I said I would the Moto G does get pretty loud, but tends to distort when the volume is maxed, depending on what type of music that is being played. Again, we're talking about a $179 phone, so it's hard to be too critical, but I thought it should be stated. So, would I suggest someone, or you for that matter, to spend your hard-earned cash to go online and buy this phone? Well, I did, and I've been using it as my daily driver ever since. For those that know me, know I usually get through my day with two phones in my pocket. One being the Nokia Lumia 920 and the other being an Android phone of some sort. As of right now, I've been using the Moto G as my main Android phone and I'm not missing or regretting any moment. For the price tag of $179, it's really a steal in my opinion. And for the specifications you're getting, such as the quad-core Snapdragon 400 processor, an HD 720p screen, which again looks very nice, stock Android 4.4 KitKat, this phone is easily worth a lot more money than it is being sold for. I took the liberty of jotting down both the pros and the cons so you can visually see on paper how the Moto G stacks up. So definitely check that out in the description along with the other useful links I've included. So that's going to do it for my full review of the Motorola Moto G. If you guys like this video, be sure to like this video and share it. Also, definitely do click that subscribe button so you can keep up to date with mobile technology in an ever-evolving world. Be safe, stay healthy, and I will see you guys in the next video.